Hi there, Bob Gager from Adobe here with another installment of Ask Bob, where I get to answer questions posed by our Photoshop Elements fans. Today's question comes from Kent, and Kent's looking for some advice on how to establish a basic workflow for working with his photos. Doing things like saving the edits, keeping track of different versions, knowing which photos have been edited and which photos have not been edited, some of that basic stuff. So I'm going to get started by showing how the Photoshop Elements Organizer works. It's a great tool that comes with Elements that helps you keep track of stuff like this. Let's start off just by launching Photoshop Elements. And when you do that, you're going to get what we call the welcome screen. The welcome screen lets you jump right into photo editing, or if you click this Organizer button, it'll let you open up the Photoshop Elements Organizer. Go ahead and click Organizer, and the Organizer will open up. If it's the very first time you've ever launched the Organizer, it'll ask you a few questions about where the photos and videos are on your hard drive and kind of help you through the process of importing your media into the Organizer. But I'm going to show you how to do that from scratch in case you get in this situation where your Organizer is up and running and there's nothing imported yet. It's really easy to import stuff. Over here on the top left is the Import button. Just click on Import and decide how you want to import your photos and or videos into the Elements Organizer. If you choose from files and folders, that means it's going to pull them off of your hard disk. And Kent, you mentioned that you already had them off of your camera onto your computer. This is the choice that you would use. If they're still on your camera or you happen to have them on the memory card, you can plug that into a card reader and use the from camera or card reader choice to pull them off of your camera directly or off of uh, the memory card using a card reader. You can also do some searching of your hard drive, and if you happen to be using a Macintosh, you can pull stuff in from iPhoto. But let's go ahead and use from files and folders. When I make that selection, I get the file open dialog box. This is straight from my operating system. Of course, I'm on a Macintosh, as you can tell. If you're on a Windows machine, it will be the Windows file open dialog. So it'll look a little different on Windows, but it'll work basically the same. So all you need to do is navigate to wherever your pictures are stored. I've got a pictures folder on my hard drive. I'm going to just dive into a folder I call personal pictures, open that up. I'm going to jump into a folder that I titled Yosemite 2015. Just the other week, uh, I was up in Yosemite with some friends. And I'm going to dive into that folder and then just down here in the bottom right, click this button called Get Media. Now I could change some of these choices along the way, but usually I just leave the default set. So just go ahead and navigate to where your photos are and click Get Media. And what that will do is go ahead and read through that folder and any subfolders that happen to be in there and import those images into the Elements Organizer. And you can see as soon as they're here, I can start to see thumbnails of what those images look like. Now in the Organizer here, there's a couple things I can do. Uh, if I double click on any image, it'll expand it and make it larger. If I double click again, it'll go back to this view. Uh, there's a zoom slider here, so if I want tiny little thumbnails, I can zoom down, or if I want larger thumbnails, I can zoom up. So I can adjust it to any way I want to look at it here in the organizer. Now you are asking about how you might keep track of photos you've edited, and there's probably a number of different ways you can do that. Uh, you could do something like give them a tag. Over here on the bottom right, I can open up the Tags panel. So click on Tags Info, and then click on Tags, and I could select a photo uh, that I've edited. This is one that I actually happen to have edited and I could just type in whatever tag I want. I'll type in edited and add. And you can see up here in my keywords panel, other, is that tag I just added. If I wanted to maybe say tag this one not edited, although the absence of the edited tag would tell me that as well, I can type in a tag called not edited. And now each of these photos is tagged. And to filter down my photo library to just photos I've tagged, I just come over here in my tags panel and click this little box right here to the left of the tag. So you can see if I click on the edited tag, it filters everything down and shows me just those photos that I've edited. If I unclick that, I see everything. If I click the not edited, well, it shows me that one that I tagged with not edited. So as I've gone through and See, a few of these I've actually already edited. Uh, I can remember I did this recently. This one's been edited. I can also just drag, oops, I want to drag the edited tag. I can drag this tag and drop it on a photo, and that'll assign the tag. So once I type it in, I don't have to type it again. 
I can just do the drag and drop kind of thing to assign which ones have been edited. So let me maybe go down here to one more that I know is down a little lower in the list uh, that I have edited. Uh, here we go. This one has been edited as well. So I'm just going to drag that. All right. So you can see now when I click on this uh, box to the left of the edited tag, it will show me the ones that are edited. If again, if I unclick it, I can see everything. So let's go through and actually edit a photo and show you some other stuff. Um, maybe let's take, uh, oh gosh, I don't know, one of these. So we'll just select a photo and I can either click on the editor button down here in the action bar to open it up in the editor, uh, or I can right click on the photo and just say edit with Photoshop Elements Editor. And that will open up my photo for editing. Now, once I'm in the editor, I can do any kind of edits I want. Maybe I want to switch to quick edit mode. If you're more of a beginner editor, you want to use quick. There's a number of different panels over here on the right. If I just want to do some adjustments like exposure, I can expand the exposure panel. Uh, I can either slide the slider myself or I can just hover over any of these thumbnails and get different exposures. So I might want to just brighten this one up just a little bit uh, like that. So I click on that thumbnail. And then maybe I want to crop this photo a little bit. So over here on the left is my crop tool. I'll crop that. I can pick from one of the automated crop suggestions where we analyze your photo and uh, try and give you a, a crop uh, that looks really good. And I'll do that. I'll just go ahead and pick this first one, click on the green check mark, and it will crop my photo. So now I've edited this photo down, and I want to save those changes, of course. So I can close the photo, click this little X right here in the top right corner. Uh, I get asked, do I want to save the changes or not? So let's go ahead and say save. And where do I want to put them? This is a file save as dialog box from your operating system. Again, Windows will look a little bit different than the Mac. And there's some choices down here. Now, you probably just want to leave the defaults all checked down here in the bottom. So yes, I want to include it in the elements organizer. And I want to save it in what we call a version set with the original. And I'll show you what that does in just a second. And just hit save and it will save that edited version. You can see now it's a little brighter than it was, uh, and it's cropped a little more uh, square aspect ratio than the original photo. And what it's also done is saved it in a version set. So you can see this little icon right here to the right of my photo. If I click on that, it expands the version set. So I've got my original photo right here, and I've got the edited version. So you don't have to worry about clobbering, overriding, losing that original photo because you do some editing and make some mistakes and you want to go back. As long as you save it in a version set, it will keep track of the original uh, and the newer version that you've added. I'm going to add these two tags, right? So the newer one, I want to drag and drop the edited tag. And the older one, I'll just drag and drop the not edited tag. And then again, like before, if I click edited, I can see the newer version. If I click not edited, oops, I don't want to check them both. <laughs> I want to check not edited. So I can see the older version. Now, since it's in a version set, it's also showing me the newer one. Um, but there's this little circle or this little line, circle with a line through it that uh, helps me know that actually doesn't match the search. So that's the basic way that you can keep track of which photos you've edited, which photos you haven't edited. Kind of a real simple workflow to, to edit your photos, uh, create these version sets, and to very easily be able to find the new ones as well as the old ones. So Kent, hopefully that uh, helps explain how to get started with the Photoshop Elements Organizer and some of the techniques that you might use uh, in your workflow to help keep track of stuff as you need.